Regional School Committee to order. Can I have the roll, please? Robert Noguera. Present. David Goodfellow. Here. David Davenport. Here. Carolyn Gomes. Yes. Brett Kulikovich. Here. Michael McHugh. Here. Robert Clark. Yeah. Is um, anyone recording the me meeting other than Lakeville Cable? Okay, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first on the agenda, we have a uh, 2014 graduation presentation by the Aponiquit Regional High School students. On this one, huh? Good evening. Thank you very much for having us tonight. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce three of our senior class officer, officers, the class of 2014. We have Meredith Cooney, our class president, Jackie Connor, vice president, Megan Patrick, our treasurer. We also have Lindsay Hopkins, who's a member of the class of 2014 and our representative here on school committee. And I'd also like to acknowledge Sarah Kudo is here with us tonight as a Representative on School Committee and Aaron Sylvia, who's here taping for us tonight as another member of the class of 2014. So these students are here tonight to ask the School Committee to approve their proposal regarding the conferral of diplomas at graduation. In the past, hundreds of graduates at Aponiquet have received their diplomas very proudly on graduation day, and they have received those diplomas from a variety of folks. They've been principals, assistant principals, members of the School Committee, town officials, and school employees. And the presentation and proposal that the students are offering you tonight acknowledges the importance of all of those folks in their lives and, and furthers that request and, and looks for you to help them make a decision about commencement moving forward. So I turn it to them. Hi, my name is Meredith Cooney and I'm the senior class president here at Aponiquit. On behalf of myself, Jacqueline Connor, our class vice president, Megan Patrick, our class treasurer, and the rest of the class of 2014, we would like to make a request. We would be pleased to have the option of requesting employees of the Freetown Lakeville Regional School District, school committee members, and town officials, all of whom could be past or present members, to confer the seniors with their diplomas at graduation. Our class is passionate, passionate about obtaining this as an option because many students value and appreciate the relationships which they have created over the past four years, or for some, even 12 years, with our staff members, our town officials, and our school committee members. It would make our graduation day more memorable to us because we would be sharing it with someone who has shaped us into becoming the students and the people who we are today. Thank you for giving us this opportunity, and we hope that you consider giving us this honor and this privilege. Thank you. Okay. Members of the committee, first off, um, do we have a policy on graduation? Because I don't think that that's under our purview. Okay. I, I know I asked this last meeting um, whether or not it was a school event or whether or not it was a district event. But either way, if it were a district event, it would be under the jurisdiction of the district. Right. Well, if it was a district event, it'd be under the jurisdiction of the, of the superintendent, and... You don't have a school committee policy that right. I can find, no. Okay. So the question about policy is no, there isn't a policy. Okay. You probably have practices, and it looks like... Traditions. Traditions and practices, and mm -hmm. it looks like they have changed, evolved over the years, which is not atypical as, as new principals come in and start to put their own little twist to this, you start to see that happen. There is no policy. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. Well, there, may not, there may not be a written policy, but I know a precedent at least is that present and former school committee people are, were allowed to present diplomas, particularly to their own children. Uh, before that, it was the superintendent that presented the diplomas, and that was, that was back quite a few years ago when we had a the committee said, you know, this is, this is crazy because most of the students don't even know the superintendent. Why don't we have a, the principal of the high school do it because they're the ones that they're in contact with. This just seems to me 
be just a little bit of an extrapolation on that. I, I don't see a problem with it at all. No. I, I'm more than in favor to support their request. I think it's well done, well written, well presented, and well put together. So they didn't finish presenting it, I think. Oh, they haven't? No. You got yeah. more? More for us? Oh, oh, they have. Oh, okay. Short, sweet, okay. what we like. All right. <laughs> well presented. Oh, okay, great. All right. All right, so. Um, I don't know if we vote or we just offer our consensus. Do we need Chair? You don't need to There's vote. No policy, no. This isn't, there isn't a policy. You're not asking for a change. I think the, the group came to you because there are some practices, and I know last year there were some concerns. I think I was in at the end of it. So they wanted to bring this as an awareness, both for the school committee but also for the community members as well, that there will be a, a, a little bit of a different nuance this year than last year. And I'm sure it will evolve a little bit more, whether this committee or another wants to establish some kind of routine, you know, that will be up to the future members and. I, I would ask, I would ask the class officers of you, what about the, uh, the timing of graduation? There was quite a bit of discussion last year where we went from a, an evening graduation last year as opposed to day graduations of uh, previous years. Has been any, any discussion on that or thought on that? So it is on a Friday again this year. Um, and that was a decision that had been made at the conclusion of the school year last year. The date was released publicly, so very hesitant to change that. But moving forward, it could certainly be something that would be open to discussion. Um, in my limited time back here at the high school, I have heard some very good feedback about a Friday evening graduation. I know there has been some concern about the scheduling of rain dates, and that's certainly something we could look at in the future. All right, thank you. Mr. Davenport. Just, just a comment more about logistics. Not, I have no issue at all with the presentation. Um, at last year's graduation, with the numerous folks that were handing out diplomas, and, and the school committee was kind of sitting just behind that. Logistically, it kind of created some log jams, and uh, it was. We've, we've talked I think about that. Dr. Stockton has assured me that they're going to address that. I, I'm spending I, some time on logistics to, yeah. to work yes. out how that's going to happen. That yes. would be a positive. Yeah. Make it flow, and also just so that I think the opportunity for everybody to take pictures and to be placed in a position that provides also a flow that we're not sitting there for longer than what everybody wants to, particularly if it's a hot day. So yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Motion to endorse this. Yeah, uh, you can do whatever you like. <coughs> All right, I'll uh, entertain a motion to uh, in support of their request. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just, uh, just a quick comment. I just wanted to say I commend all of you for sticking up for what you believe in. I know that you got the entire senior class on board um, and to sign that petition. And, and it, I mean, I really commend you. It, it took a lot of courage to come before us to do what you've done. And um, this is your special day, so great job. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. <coughs> Congratulations. We'll see you at graduation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what I would like to do Thank next you. on the agenda, um, due to some time constraints, I'd like to move item D next on the agenda, as long as anybody doesn't have questions. So Mrs. Hunter's limousine that's sitting outside from Duxbury. Yeah, limousine I had while I worked here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to tell anybody that. Hi. I'm everywhere, I'm ubiquitous. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Five months ago, I was honored to stand before the school committee and was welcomed into the Freetown Lakeville School District to assume the principalship of the Asawamsa Elementary School. I was so fortunate to have inherited a school in a school community that was so well cared for, nurtured by a great educational leader for the past 14 years. When Lori Hunter took over a Kushner, excuse me, as the ones at elementary school, so it's a bad habit, apologize. <laughs> the current events at the time were what Y2K would do to, do to our then computers. We weathered that storm. Lori then successfully navigated Asawamset through the waves of ed reform, the infancy of MCAS, no child left behind, the last term of Bill Clinton, both terms of George Bush, and into the second term of Barack Obama. Four inaugural balls. Four inaugural balls. 
when reading books were called basils and then referred to as anthologies. This, my friends, is longevity and a true commitment to the children of this now regional school district. I will skip the math, as you probably will be thankful, of how many students have walked the halls of Asawamset since you started. But those first kindergartners that you welcomed are well into their college years. As Laurie um, honed her craft over those 14 years, she created a culture of putting students first. When the reins of the school were handed over to me, it was very evident that this would be an easy thing for me to foster um, a school-centered school. Mrs. Hunter's efforts to get to know her students also created a tradition that was endured, endeared by her students and staff and one that I hope to actually reinstitute. That being the principal's lunch. Every student at some point during the year was invited to have lunch in her office. This provided a unique opportunity for her to express that you are special, I care about you, I am interested in what you think and what you feel. Mrs. Hunter inspired the AES community to recognize and value what made every child special through the well-known starfish story. Most of you are probably familiar with a version of that story, so indulge me as I retell it. Once upon a time, there was an old man who used to go to the ocean to do his writing. He had the habit of walking on the beach every morning before he began his work. Early one morning, he was walking along the shore after a big storm had passed and found the vast beach littered with starfish as far as the eye could see, stretching in both directions. However, off in the distance, the old man noticed a small boy approaching. As the boy walked, he paused every so often, and as he grew closer, the man could see that he was occasionally bending down to pick up an object and throw it into the sea. The boy came closer still, and the man called out, Good morning. May I ask what it is that you are doing? And the young boy paused, looked up, and replied, Why, throwing the starfish into the ocean. The tide has washed them up on the beach, and they can't return to the sea by themselves, the youth replied. And when the sun gets high, they will die, unless I throw them back into the water. The old man replied, but there must be tens of thousands of starfish on the beach. I'm afraid you will not be able to make much of a difference there. And the boy paused. He bent down, picked up yet another starfish, looked at it, threw it as far as he could into the ocean, then he turned to the man and smiled and said, well, it sure made a difference to that one. Which brings us to this moment. What better way to recognize someone that gave so much to help shape, grow, and educate our children than to honor her legacy with a perpetual award? I am so pleased. I am so pleased to present to you the Lori Hunter Golden Starfish Award. This award will be given each year to an outgoing grade three student from Asawamsa Elementary School that possesses the qualities that you, Mrs. Hunter, found so dear. That being committed, perseverance, and resilience while being compassionate, dedicated, and committed and determined. This award plaque will be displayed in the front of our school and the recipient's name will be added each year. The first recipient of this award was chosen by Mrs. Hunter, and the recipient is also a former uh, third grader from her last year at our school. So if you will, would you help me welcome Mrs. Hunter to present this first award? Lori? So thank you, I can't really express in words how touched I am to be here tonight. I don't know, I think to come back seven months after you've left the position and be as welcomed as I have been since two o'clock this afternoon um, probably just puts that final little icing on the, the cake um, of my journey here at, in Lakeville. Um, a little bit on the starfish story because I think there's a legacy to the story. You don't know what you're putting out when you put it out. Um, we had just lost 
some, many of you lived this with me. We had just lost a million dollars out of a five million dollar budget and I laid off um, 23 and a half people. And we were in a pretty bad place um, in our spirits at Assawamsted. And so that starfish story emerged from a message of hope to get through a year, a message of frustration with very large class sizes and challenges, um, and really trying to anchor ourselves and to just do what we could for even one child in a very different and difficult environment. It grew as the, as the environment um, you know, became more positive, it became let's, let's do this for every child. And it's not just about the one we can save, it's about saving them all. Um, and so that truly became um, a mantra for us at Assawamsit. I am adorned in starfish um, as they came to me. As I left, I have actual starfish in my office in Duxbury. They think it's because I'm near the beach. I don't correct that because it's what it means to me that matters. Um, and I tell you, that has really anchored me in my new position. And so much of what I'm doing there is because of my experiences here. So thank you for inviting me back. Um, on to the award. Jamie McCloskey's here. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I need to tell Jamie's story a little bit so that he knows why he's here, because we actually haven't spoken, right? Um, and um, so that, you know, I think this is a legacy. I was the one giving out these awards annually, and they truly mean an awful lot to the children receiving them as they mean to the people named after them. I've had that privilege of talking with Mrs. Hitchcock, um, you know, the, the widow of the uh, teacher who died in Vietnam and you know, perpetuating that legacy for that family. So it, please know how much this means to me. But for Jamie, um, I selected you, Jamie, because for me, this award was all about a child who worked really hard, never gave up, became very successful because of that hard work and was happy and smiling throughout all of it. And there were times we had to eke that smile out of you a little bit, because Jamie's on the quieter side, um, but we've seen more and more of it as the years have gone on. I've known Jamie since he was in preschool. This was one of my gifts with my longevity, is I would meet kids very, very young and follow them through. So I knew Jamie when he was three and until he and I both left Aswamsit last fall, last summer. So. You are just the exact kind of child that I would want to receive this award because it's important to me that you know, that we know how hard you're working and that you feel very good about that and you continue to succeed. Okay? So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm glad you I just would like to end by stating that we did invite Lori back this afternoon um, so that she could once again roam the halls filled with <laughs> children and teachers and oh. she made her rounds and um, it, was a, it was a great day. Yeah, it was funny. I was all excited to see the adults and this, the kids were beyond <laughs> excited. So it was really a fun afternoon. It was great. Yeah, it was great to see. I was sloppy seconds once again, but it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mom. It was a pleasure. We're going to take a short uh, three minute recess. Thank you. Can we get a picture of
report to the committee, number eight. Yeah, we do. Uh, Boston and the girls on report to the committee. So they can leave if we do that, maybe I'll Yeah. All right. It should only take us like two minutes. Yeah, this is going to update you on what's going on. All right, I'll do that right after the school age entrance. Okay, thank you. Okay, you guys got to go home and study too? Yeah. I have to go drop Oh, you limo's outside? Yeah. You limo's outside waiting, okay. Yeah, sure. I have to go uh, try and pass art class. Yeah, I finished tomorrow because it drops off at school on Friday, which I didn't realize that. Oh, because of your rotation? rotation? Yeah. My new semester. Yeah. So I have three drawings that I have to go home and finish. Oh, that'd be helpful. I, I will stay like as long as. I usually, I usually try to stay until like right. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. All right, thank you. I can't stay like oh, oh, she's gone. Yeah. All right. I'm just uh, waiting. The, the limo was running. Yeah. The limo was running. I'm just waiting for uh, Brett and Mr. Davenport to get back. It's Mr. Davenport. He's right there. All right. So we're waiting on Brett. Uh, thank you. Sure. Is that a quick recess? No, not a problem. I was going to do it anyways. But. All right, we'll do the kindergarten next thing. I'm going to jump. Do one more report so we can get the students out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like there was only one delinquent. Oh no, Mr. Brown hasn't signed. Thank you. Yep. All right, we're back in. Up. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. And we're back. Oh, waiting on our recording secretary. Oh, okay. Uh oh. That's interesting. Meg's taking pictures. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Here she is. Okay. Yeah, see? <laughs> Thank you. Is Carolyn going for the evening? I believe she is. Okay, next uh, we're back in session. Next on the agenda, uh, please note that Mrs. Gomes has left. Um, School entry age policy request for 2014-2015 school year and closure vote required. Dr. Nash. Sure. Um, you have uh, before the committee this evening a request from Mrs. Riccardi. Riccardi, you got the talk, uh, for an exception to your kindergarten entrance age policy. Uh, I'm not sure if the committee was able to receive um, the information that she also enclosed this afternoon. Mm -hmm. But as you know, um, this would require a, a vote from the school committee because of your policy, your entrance age policy of five years um, by September 1st. So, um, Ms. Rich Mrs. Ricciardi is here this evening to speak to that uh, and to provide any information the committee might like. Good evening. My name is Suzanne Ricciardi. I am here tonight to petition the school committee for a waiver for my identical twin daughters, Aubrey and Hayden Ricciardi, to attend kindergarten in, two, in September 2014. They were supposed to be born in August 2009. There was miscommunication between the nurse and my doctor, and consequently and mistakenly, my labor was stopped. I was induced on September 11, 2009, and that is when my daughters were born. If they stood before you today, you probably would not be able to tell them apart, but I can assure you they are very different. Just as their similarities in appearance do not tell everything about them, neither does the date on which they were born. Aubrey and Hayden are the youngest of my four children. My son Jonah is a fourth grader at Grays. My daughter Emerson is a second grader at Free 10 Elementary. They are both top students, leaders, and role models in their class. Emerson has an August birthday, and you would not know that she's one, one of the youngest in her class. I believe that Aubrey and Hayden are more than ready to enter kindergarten in the fall. They have been in preschool for two years at the Rainbow Workshop and Learning Center. Beth Lawton is the director and teacher there. She's been teaching preschool for 31 years. The curriculum at Rainbow Workshop is extensive. From the documents that I have sent you, you can see they are learning more than the average preschooler. They know how to use a calendar. They can recite the Pledge of Allegiance. They could recognize their letters and knew that their letter sounds before entering preschool at age three. Along with the letter of the week, they are also learning about the world. They, they can identify all seven continents or on a map or a globe. 
They have learned about the United States, Italy, France, Germany, Japan, and have started their study on Uganda this week. They can tell you what each of those countries' flags look like. They can show you where they are located on a map. They can tell you words in their language of those countries. They know what continent each country is located on and some landmarks and customs. If you were to ask them what country, what continent Japan is on, they would tell you that Japan is not actually attached to a continent. The land used to be part of Asia, but it broke off a long time ago and now is an island. They are understanding these concepts. Aubrey and Hayden are role models in their class. They participate and enjoy being with their friends. They are writing letters and want to know how to spell everything. They are sounding out CVC words and are always asking me to sit and teach them how to read. My older children were both reading at, at four and a half years old. Aubrey and Hayden are in the second year of dancing school. They are good listeners and have already performed in a dance recital. They have been in swimming lessons since they were a year old. They are now swimming with first graders in their swimming lessons. Aubrey and Hayden have played soccer at Chubb Williams camp. They are not on the sidelines watching. They were right in the mix, scoring goals. My girls are well-developed and well-rounded. They have tested in the 89th percentile for children their age entering kindergarten. They are excited about school and eager to learn. I know that they will be bored in kindergarten, even if allowed to enter in this fall. They will be role models and help others learn from their example. To keep them from moving forward would be detrimental. I am not going to find another preschool as rigorous as Rainbow Workshop. I can't afford private kindergarten for two. I don't believe that is a valid option or a fair option. If these girls were born, say, 12 weeks premature, we would not be having this meeting. They could have every special need in the book and services would have to be requ required and presented to them. That is not the case. They were born strong and healthy. They were home less than 48 hours after they were born. A child with the right birthday who falls, fails the kindergarten screening will still be allowed to enter kindergarten. A child with the right birthday who will be destructive in the classroom will still be allowed to enter kindergarten. The day that Aubrey and Hayden were born is only one small part of who they are as students. I urge you to strongly consider granting a waiver for my daughters, Aubrey and Hayden Ricciardi, to enter kindergarten at Free Town Elementary in September of 2014. Thank you for your time and support in this matter. Thank you. Oh, who wants a spot of discussion from the committee? Um, oh, go ahead, Mr. Goodfellow. All right, um, <clears throat> just reviewing the uh, the policy, there was a, there was just something that I wasn't I wasn't particularly clear about, and perhaps through you to the superintendent, sure. she might be able to help me with this. By granting a waiver, are, are, it's not the school committee that's allowing this child to go to kindergarten. We're allowing them to participate in the screening process. No, we're allowing them to attend kindergarten. Yeah, see. Waiving the age that you have established at the entrance age. Okay, so that so they're not screened like every other they child. They are screened as part of the process, but that that doesn't determine. That helps with information uh, for um, teachers and staff, but it, it is not the policy, the mm. practice that all schools have as part of entrance age. I see. Okay, thank you for clearing yep. that up. Just a follow-up, what does that screening process entail? Uh, gross motor skills, um, social behavior, there's a lot of information that parents fill out, but uh, it is, you know, it's an assistance too because many of these students are coming in from out from either private preschools um, or day schools or daycare centers or whatever. So it gives additional information to um, staff members policy with regard to entrance age is pretty widespread in the state of Massachusetts. I mean, we downloaded and I think and showed you that there isn't a school district that doesn't establish or doesn't have an entrance age policy. It's just different. So if you were to look at the 351 school districts, they all have them. And because school committee establishes policy, only a school committee can vote to, um, to accept a policy that they establish or to change a policy. 
Well, the, screen, the screening process has never been used to exclude a student? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh. Just information. No, no it's, information. It, it's collecting information and data um, that we use that informs the practitioners um, and gives them information for these students coming in for the very first time to school. So, and it looks very different. You know, in some districts they use Brigantz. You know, there are all kinds of screening tools that you use. The students that we have a lot of information about are those students who would be in an eighth grade preschool that already come you know, with a lot of information. But you know, it's a, a general screening tool. It looks very different um, in each district, but you know, it's gathering information. Mrs. Rachati, were you planning on doing the full day kindergarten with them or the half day? I prefer the half day. Prefer the half day. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, that was oh. Mr. Clark covered my oh, question. Yes, they asked what's going on. Yeah. Oh, all right, go ahead. Go ahead. Could, you, could, you, could you comment on it? Comment, I'm sorry, I was just on looking the at On the request. I, mean, no, I, I really can't. I mean, you, a school committee establishes a policy. As superintendent, my job is to implement policy. Only a school committee can vote um, to accept policy. Well, I can't, I mean, everybody has a reason why students, you know, and I can't attest to why some student is not, or is or is not prepared. The reason that most school districts have a policy with a figure, with a date, is for that very reason that you're struggling with, mm. which is what we pointed out last time. Mm. The exception that you made, remember, to the Brockton um, public school student was because Brockton's entrance age was different, and that student already was in kindergarten. Right, so they would have repeated the grade, right? And then we made an exception for a student who was in the Freetown Lake yes, program. Yes, you did. Yes, yes. And so you've made with two a four prior hour, to this request. Four-hour window difference there, I believe. It's very <coughs> difficult. Um, it's always difficult to do that. Um, so obviously, um, because people have very good reasons for why four hours makes a difference and six hours doesn't in two weeks. And I think if you ask the teacher, they would say a month may not make a difference. And Ms. Tricotti will tell you that her children are coming in very prepared. But that's why, if you look at 351 school districts, that's why they have an entrance age for the very reason that people, it's a black and white. Whether you like it or not, it's a black and white. And that's all really that it is there for in so many times. Thank you. Mr. McHugh. Um, I was here for the student that had come from Brockton, and I was not here from the second student. D is, does anyone recall when that student's birthday was, just out of curiosity? It was 4 a.m. on the 1st. 4 a.m. on the 1st. I'd like to offer this up. Um, <coughs> we did grant it for one. When you grant it for one, it puts us in a difficult situation. We knew this was going to happen down the road where you grant it for one, you should grant it for another. And I think that being the fact that she's got recommendations from a very reputable place in Freetown um, with a very reputable um, director of that um, daycare, and I've heard nothing but good things about that daycare, I think we should allow this particular one with the caveat that this go back to the policy subcommittee and we come up with a policy that will address these issues going forward. I would, I would be reluctant to go along with that, and the reason being is that if we discover that we made a mistake with one, it, that does not require that we make a mistake again, okay? Um, perhaps we should not have uh, waived our policy at all um, for the very reasons that we were cautioned in the first place. Um, if you say, well, it's only 11 days, how many people are now in between four hours and 11 days whom, whom now will feel that they are now entitled or, or certainly should be also have their situations looked at? Now I take someone who's now just 11 days away from the 11 days and they're out to 22 days. Or what's a month? We're going to, you know, when we, when we were first cautioned, we said, you know, you could be opening the floodgates on this one. And, you know, yet we, I don't know very much about Rainbow Workshop. I do hear that it's a, a, a reputable institution. I don't know about the teacher's credentials or the instructor's credentials. Um, I don't know, uh, I did, you know, read all of the material that was sent to us, 
but I'm not sure, you know, under, you know, what guidelines the assessments took place. Um, and honestly, I'm not in the position to be able to, I think, appropriately interpret that type of, of thing. Um, so, you know, I think that at the least we should take a, hard, a look at the, the, uh, the policy and decide that if it's, if, if we need to, you know, we need to stick to our guns on the policy. The policy is the policy and every district in the Commonwealth has a policy regarding this. Um, I, I, I'm not for just uh, saying, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and let this one go because we did it before. I, I don't think that's a good, good logic. I think that if we made a mistake once, I, 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 I regret that. Um, but it doesn't mean that we have to make the mistake twice. Understood. That's my feelings. I was offering a compromise. So, Mr. McHugh um, and then Mr. Davenport. Yeah, I can see both sides to this, and, and I know there are some of us that are familiar with Rainbow Workshop and some that aren't, and that will factor into the decisions. Um, to your comment about sending it back to the policy subcommittee, I would almost wonder if in doing that, and, and it may be a more appropriate comment for that subcommittee, would be to look at, you know, the date is August 31st. Waivers would be considered for students born in September because it seems like those are the ones that are coming up, students that are born on September 1st, September 4th, September 11th. And, and I can understand that. If your child has been in school with kids that were born in July and August, is it socially responsible to then make them wait a year because they were born 10 days later? I, I can see that argument. Um, my inclination, sort of like yours, would be to allow this, just because I have the familiarity to know what program that that students are coming from. But um, I'm not making that as a motion, I'm just expressing that as an opinion right now. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I have a, a, a question first and a comment. The um, school committee packet that we received also had a brief email exchange, um, and I don't, I don't see it in here unless I'm just fumbling through my papers. And it was actually replaced. I apologize with um, newer information that Mrs. Riccardi sent in. Okay, but that that email exchange was largely Ms. Riccardi chose to go to Ms. Safrino, our, yes. our building principal, which is actually quite proper. Um, and I was wondering if that exchange ever turned into anything like meeting or or any anything beyond just placing the request. It was my understanding that the request was just forwarded to me to um, bring to the chair of the school committee to okay. come before the school committee. All right, so that. Mr. Safrino told her that was the route to go. All right, so that's my question. Okay, so um, you have your answer. And then, yeah, and then my, my comment is um, tied to that. One, I'm, I'm not an expert, nor do I necessarily think anybody are, possible exception of Bob um, background, but. Um, I, uh, I see both sides of it, like Mike said. We also got this information quite late, and Carolyn wasn't able to stay. I'm not sure the reasons, but she, she had some thoughts on this as well. And I'm, I'm wondering whether or not uh, it would be better to defer by one meeting, and perhaps um, we could get some input from the district. Uh, perhaps it would be appropriate to have our building principal meet with Ms. Riccardi, or uh, we probably don't have any policy or, or whatever that exists for how to go about this, but you know, how do, how do I decide? And yes, we're getting further away. I mean, we had a we had a Brockton student who, just by virtue of the district he was in to the district he was moving, would have repeated a grade. You know, we had John Oliver of Mary whose wife was in labor in the middle of the night while the deadline passed. Now we're in, in a bit, now we're you know a week and a half beyond, with very compelling reasons. But you know, how do we make that call? I'm, that's plus, why you establish a policy. Right, and plus we only got the information within the last couple of days, and it's common practice, though we don't follow it all the time on the committee, when we get information late like this to not make the vote right away um, so that we have a chance to consider things a little more slowly. The additional information that I think you've got today was provided this afternoon, um, so we didn't have it any sooner. Um, but I'm not faulting you, anyone. I'm yeah, just no, making I'm an just observation. Saying, I just wanted the committee to know that. Um, but understandably, uh, if you were to look at the DESE website, you would see very clearly that there isn't a school district that doesn't struggle with this, but every school district has an age line. There is no fast and hard way because you don't have existing educational information about students to make good judgments. 
what's to say, you know, whether one school um, preschool is better than another? No one, a uh, one student isn't more ready in Oct because they're born in October than September. What's to say that a month makes a difference with a student? That's why the schools and districts establish a very hard and fast policy because every exception has merit. Every exception. And so, uh, you know, that's what you're, you're struggling with. Every exception has merit to it. But uh, if you were to, as I said, look at the website, um, the discussion to revisit policy is you're going to struggle with then what is the policy? What would you want to happen? And that's going to be your discussion that you're going to have if you don't have a black and white entrance age. Just a question. Is it true, and because I had read this and, and not in any official place, I don't know that it is true, that when somebody operates a private school or something of that sort in a town, that the local school committee, at least at the setup of that school, has some review of what it's proposing as a curriculum, something of that nature? We, ha we have, a, they have a responsibility um, if they're a private school um, to the local district um, in which town they reside in. They have a responsibility to provide information. And I can't tell you, you know, I have not had the experience of, of having to, to do a review to tell you exactly what that information would be, uh, but they do. But the, uh, <coughs> but I don't believe but that. But that's a private school. Right, that's not a not preschool. A, yeah, it's not okay. a preschool. That would be a private school. Right. Uh, so not at that age level. Religious based or, or any other way. No. Okay. So what does the committee want to do? I've offered up a possible, you know, I, like, I, I, I would like to just, you know, make some comments on the back of uh, Mr. Q's uh, first statement, which was, you know, if we have a waiver for September, well, now my child was just two days off of being able to apply for a waiver. Sure. My child's just 11 days off just being able to apply for a waiver. I'm in October and my child's very ready. I, I, we either got to stick to our policy or we got to review the policy. And I know that's a little bit different than what we did just a couple months ago. But, um, you know, we were warned that it could open the floodgates and it looks like it just might be the case where you have a lot of people for a lot of valid reasons. And, and I'm not saying that these, that, this, that these children are not ready for kindergarten. I'm not insinuating that at all. Uh, I'm sure that they are. But what happens if by we have someone who comes to us and says, you know, my child's ready, born on the 9th. You let someone in who was born on the 11th, and that child isn't ready. Have we, have we helped or hurt? Um, we have a policy. We were advised to stick by it. I'm inclined to do so or revisit the policy. For, ahead, for the Kevin. chair. Um, I'm not sure if a floodgate has been broken or not. I mean, I've been on a school committee four years, and, and actually this is the first year that I've even heard these requests, and I don't know if it's a coincidence or if we're starting to create it. Um, I, I just don't know the answer to that question, but it's a, but it's a fair point to make. Um, I j my gut feeling is if, if we could table this, and, and I would ask the question again, is there a way that we could get some sort of opinion or, or expertise from within our district that would either, you know, supplement the information we've been given or, or counter it. Um, so I, I don't, I don't feel like I'm the expert myself, and um, I, I'm just, I'm looking, I'm looking for, you know, for a way to, to work through an issue like this. I'm, I'm not sure all of a sudden we're going to have people October, November, and beyond. But I don't know what. For the chair, I don't know what specific information, you know, certainly the principal can talk about the merits of kindergarten, but I don't know what specific information they could give you as to the merits of any individual case. The parent can give you that information because if the student isn't in our district, isn't in our system, we don't have that information to give you on a particular student. If you're asking us to look at a different policy, then that's really your policy subcommittee, of which you may certainly want to have elementary principals and other stakeholders involved so that you see the full picture of it. I, if I could continue, I, I, guess, I guess I'm asking, and, and maybe it's just not the right way to go about things, 
I'm, I'm just a asking, pondering in my mind whether or not our building principal, who would be in charge of the building where the student would attend, might sit with the parents and the child and gain an understanding of why this request is being made, meet the child, and be able to give us, you know, something to go on uh, beyond the request itself. Um, uh, short of that, I'm, I'm uncomfortable tonight. I, I really like to sort of table this. I'm not making that motion yet. I'm just suggesting that, that we could do that so that we could defer action. Mr. McHugh and Mr. Uh, I've spoken once already. Brett can go first. Um, I'm thinking after hearing what everyone's saying that personally, um, I mean, rules and things are put in place to apply to everyone and to offer everyone equal opportunity in an attempt to offer everyone equal opportunity. However, we're raising enough points here that, you know, how long has this policy been in place? Are there districts that do things differently? Do they have a waiver in other towns? Do we have something we can look at with the policy committee? Maybe we, we defer and have the policy committee take a look at least to see if there are other districts that have, no, they have a, a waiver in the first month, but then not after that. Or a lot of people, maybe they stand hard on the line and we just review it. That's all. Maybe we don't change anything. Maybe we make it August 1st. But maybe looking at it wouldn't be a bad idea at this point. It's come up three times now. Well, that's why I had offered off what I had offered up, you yeah. know, since we did it for one. Once you do it for one, in my mind, you got to do it for yeah, I just, the, the next one. You know what I'm saying? To be fair and for equity is my point. So with that in mind, my thing would be with a motion tonight if, um, to have to do it for this particular case and then kick it back to the policy subcommittee to put a policy together and then going forward, we enforce that policy. Uh, Mr. McHugh had his hand up before you. Um, so it's kind of going to go in the direction that you just said, um, possibly a step back to try and strike a balance and, and off of what Dave was talking about before. Um, and I'll offer it as a motion that, that can be discussed, debated, amended, what have you, is that um, I would move that we ask the parents to take the children and to meet with perhaps the building principal, the preschool teacher that is at Freetown Elementary to get an opinion back, a recommendation, and that we not entertain any more of these waiver requests until the policy subcommittee has reviewed it. I don't know if that's too long of a motion or not, but that's, that's the direction I'd like to go in with Can that. Can I get a second? Um, point, of, point of clarification, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that under your policy you could do that because you would have to then change your policy, just to change your policy, amend your policy to include something different. That's all I'm saying at this point. You certainly mm -hmm. can make a decision based on additional information if that can be provided to you by the building principal. She has not received Mrs. Rashadi's information, I don't think, yet. She hasn't looked at that. Whether or not that information is going to help you, you know, I don't know. Either way, we got to. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll rescind that, and instead, you know, I'll go based on my gut, and again for discussion, I would recommend that we grant this waiver and then refer this back to the policy subcommittee without before we entertain any further waivers, because my gut is, is that this is an okay thing to do. Is that a motion? Yes. Okay. Can I get a? Do I have a second for discussion? Second for discussion. Okay. All right. Discussion on the motion. Mr. Goodfellow, you had your hand up and been patiently waiting. I just couldn't disagree with you more that you that you, that that it would be considered fair just simply to grant this because we did it for one. Um, I think we have to take a very good hard look at what our policy is, and um, you know it it's it's it seemed like a very easy thing for a few hours, and that may have been wrong. That may have been wrong of this committee to do. Um, to, to simply say, let's make, let's make that mistake again, because we made it before, is just something I'm very uncomfortable with. Um, so that being said, there's a motion on the floor. I would not support this motion. Mr. Park? Well, I think in, in a perfect world, every student should probably be evaluated by the teacher at the school that they're going to go to. As Mrs. Lord said the other night, every student is different. And uh, there are probably students that are admitted because they're legally able to be, or they meet the deadline, but they probably shouldn't be there. 
and there are probably other people that aren't allowed to go that are way ahead of everybody else. Developmentally, cognitively, I'm, I'm, I'm not an elementary person. But, I mean, ideally, I think every student should be evaluated by the, the teacher that they're going to have and, and let them make the decision. But that's not going to happen. Just like we have, you know, the deadline for driving age and voting age and drinking alcohol. They're all set, set numbers. Uh, I've got a concern about the person that's recommending that we take the student. I mean, I, I know the person that runs that rain, uh, rainbow workshop, and they've got an unbelievably great program. But, but now we're making somebody on the outside kind of controlling what happens. I mean, what about other daycare providers that, that I don't know, or that we don't know? And how do, how do you screen out those recommendations or, or decide which ones we're going to accept and which ones we're not? I mean, that, that's a problem. I'm, I'm leaning towards, I'm leaning towards granting the waiver, but I'm, I'm not only going to do that tonight. I mean, I just got this today. I'd like to find out what other districts are doing and what kind of, what kind of accommodations they make for, for this kind of a situation. And if we find that maybe we can get some more information from that and better grounded in making the decision. I mean, it just, it's just funny to me that if a kid was in third or fourth grade and they were doing so well that they skipped a the grade, we'd be, we'd be applauding them. And, and now with somebody that's, somebody that's well ahead of apparently every, a lot of the other students, we're, we're hemming and hawing over it. it just um, okay, uh, Mr. Goodfellow makes a good point that, that we have a policy. And um, so I, I'd like to run with that for a second and look at what the policy is. And the, the policy is relatively simple. It, it sets a date but then it also says that exceptions can be granted by the school committee. I mean, that pretty much encapsulates it. It's not much longer than that. Um, so what do we have happening here? We, we, we have a situation where the date is passed and we have a parent who's gone to great pains to make a request for that exception. I mean, and she's followed the rules to a T, gone through the chain of command properly and, and all of these things. So the, the, the difficulties that I have right here would not be to hold whether or not we're opening floodgates or setting a bad precedent against this parent. I, I want to evaluate this on its own individual merits. What we have in front of us is nothing but information that would tend to say that these kids are, you know, well along in their ability and could handle this. It would be natural for the parent to present that sort of information. Um, I'm not saying that there's any information to the contrary, but we don't have any information from the district to support that or to present another side. So I'm, I'm not really sure, we, other than saying the date's the date, and we haven't done that in the past, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure we, where we can come off saying that. I mean, the policy says here's the date, but we can also grant exceptions. Well, that begs the question, how do we grant the exception? How do we evaluate? We've got a well-presented set of information from the parent. I'm simply asking if we take a little bit more time, I think that might satisfy the district, uh, the parent who's bringing this forth, and also some of the staff and educators and concerned citizens that take an interest in, you know, how this district operates. I just, when Mike made the, with all due respect, when you first made the motion, I thought you were going to make a motion precisely for that reason, but there was an additional piece on there that, that Dr. Nash thought wouldn't be proper, and she's probably correct. But then when you restated your motion, you restated it as that you want, wanted to grant the waiver. My, I would, su I would support deferring or at a time i would i would support deferring or i would if you would amend the motion or, or we could make another motion just to to bring this to a future date so that we could maybe get some more information from within our district to, com me, to complete if this I could clarify just a little bit because i think at the beginning you'd ask the information policies are established that say look we know nothing about the students this is your first time coming to our school district so we set a date that says this is the age at which we say you can come into kindergarten. Then the information that we collect is part of the screening process that happens sometimes uh, in s the spring is gives us information about readiness with respect to what are the challenges that you may have because we don't have any information about you. We don't, we ask parents to fill out some information sheets, we give you some gross motor skills, some tests. We screen for speech and language, those kinds of things. So that's what we do. And 
that what tells us is, okay, you've reached that magic age, whatever it is, that's part, and then we will do these things so that we have that information. Then our teachers, collectively, our kindergarten teachers and other providers in the district, when the students come in early, sometimes it happens in the summer in some districts, sometimes it happens in the first couple days before kindergarten actually starts, we'll do additional screenings. But what establishes the entrance is not screening before in most districts. So you would want to look, if you wanted to include that, at establishing a policy, working with administrators, that clearly gives some screening tools. Having said that, there aren't a lot of those out there um, that give us all of that information. And I think kindergarten teachers will tell you that um, there are a few of those. In fact, we've been talking about it because most recently we have streamlined our process so that both schools are on the same page and we use the same format, process, screening, and all of that. So that's been happening. And that question came up when we met with the principals to say, what do we currently use do we, to screen our students? What are the different things that we do? So it's kind of just the opposite. That's how it works in most districts, whether there are policies out there where they have something that says, if someone requests a waiver, here is what would have to happen before. You know, I, I just am, am not as familiar with them. I'm sure there are some out there. I'm just not that familiar with them, Dave. That's all. But, yeah, I, I just wanted to correct myself. I, I think I, I used the word daycare provider, and that's not what I meant to say. I meant to say educational centers for, for young children. And again, I know there are others in town. I don't know anything about the reputation of others. I do know that this one is, uh, is uh, superlative. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there aren't others. And it would be good to know who, who's running those and, and what, what's going on in those centers as well. Yep. Um, I wish I had the policy in front of me, and I don't. I do you? Do you have a copy? Could you pass that? Sure. Yeah, thank you. And then I'll, I'll, I'll yield to anyone who wants to speak until I review this. Thank you. I'll, I'll yield to anyone else who wants to talk. Yeah. Do you want to go ahead, Mr. McHugh? Um, just to clarify, the motion I had made originally, um, from the information that I have in front of me, my personal opinion would be to grant the waiver. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to strike a balance when I made the original motion, but, but because the way I wanted to do it, could not be done, I'd like to see granting the waiver come to a vote, and then if that were to fail, then I would support to defer it for more study. But, but my gut opinion is that the waiver should pass, and I'd like to see that voted on. Um, th that's why the motion changed. Right. So. Um, Just so there's a change. Point of order, Mr. Should the talk without being recognized? Yeah, the motion sure. didn't change. Well, Your motion is. No, the original that you grant motion the motion, that, that you grant, grant the waiver, and that you kick it to the policy. Kick subcommittee. it to the policy subcommittee. That's the motion on the floor. The original That's motion I made was to have the. There was never a second. No, no second. Okay. No, and I rescinded it. That's yeah. why I'm saying the motion should be okay. yes. Mr. Davenport. Um, one, I think we'd have to we'd have to divide that motion because I don't think that the two really deserve to be linked together. Um, you know, the granting of this waiver does not mean that that policy needs to be reviewed, um, but that's really just, mm -hmm. you know, procedural stuff. Um, and the other thing is that if the motion as stands fails, then we're really not going to be able to take any action until the following meeting when we uh, do a motion to uh, reconsider. At this point, um We've had all this discussion going yeah. back and forth. We've spent a lot of time on this. I do have some relevant okay. I'd like to make. Um, having reviewed the policy, and I just wanted to make sure that I was speaking to it correctly, it doesn't say that uh, if your child is born after the admission date that you can petition the, the, the school committee for, for a waiver. I mean, I guess that is with any policy. Any policy that exists for the school committee, I guess someone could petition for them to consider a waiver of that policy, but there's no language that specifically refers to that in the policy that, it, matter of fact, for, as, as it regards to the kindergarten, it just simply says that August 31st of the, of the school year during which they will uh, wish to enroll will be eligible to enter kindergarten in September. Um, uh, children who will be 
five years of age before August 31st of the school year during which they wish to enroll will be eligible to enter kindergarten in September. And there is no language that offers, you know, if you don't, if you don't agree with that, go ahead and come to the school committee and ask for a petition. I guess that's kind of a policy-wide type of type Since of. you set policy, a parent, a citizen can come and ask you to make an exception or to change your policy, which you can do. So. Doesn't, I don't think the, it doesn't, I don't think any policy has to ex implicitly state it. You may have a residency policy. We have residency right. policies right. around you know, what happens if a senior, for example, moves at the end of the year. Specifically, if you didn't have something in your policy, that parent may come with that student and say, will you consider this? And you may do that. And then you may decide to go back and say, gee, that was good. We want to put that in to our policy and amend our policy. So since the petition came to the principal, the principal rightly directed it to the superintendent, and then I, if I had spoken to her, would have said, but she knew because we, we spoke to her and uh, via Amy to say that since I, ca I can only implement the policy that exists as superintendent. School committees create policies, superintendents have to implement policies until they change or until someone comes forward and a waiver or an exception is granted. We've spent a lot of time discussing this, um, and we don't seem to be getting anywhere except for the only thing that I'm seeing coming out of this is everybody says we need to review the policy, we need to look at this policy. So at this point, I think Mr. McHugh respectfully should withdraw his motion, and we should entertain a motion to table this pending review by the policy subcommittee, yes. and then we'll take it up again. Yep, that's actually what I was going to do. Because I don't know what else to do at this point. Because if we take a vote now, we're going to be in a purpose where if we decide, if the vote fails, we're not going to be able to grant the waiver in the future. Right. I would uh, then. Without make, difficulty. I would then make a motion to. Um, I got to have. Yes. Will you oh, yeah. We, we have a motion on the floor at second. Yeah, it's still. Yeah. Well, I'm withdrawing. We my can't make another motion on top of that. I'm withdrawing my motion. If Dave would withdraw his second, then that kills. So if a motion to table can be made during a, a discussion on a motion. I believe it's non-debatable. Sure. But it would we kill would take a vote. So if I make a motion to lay on the table. I, I have to look it up, and I'm not inclined to argue at this point. Well, I'm sorry. No, if, you know, <laughs> that, if that's true, it's true. I've just said go with it. it I would just like to make a motion to lay this lay this issue on the table to our next meeting. It would require a second. You don't want to have it go back to the policy subcommittee because at the next meeting we're going to be in, we don't have a second yet, so at the next meeting we're going to be in the same boat. The next meeting is next week. It's February 6th. February 5th. Yeah. Oh, it's 6th. Next Wednesday. Then the, the meeting after that is the 25th, I think, because that break of vacation. 26, thank you. Well, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, I think we're just creating confusion linking the two together by saying that we're going to direct policy discussion and, you know, within consideration of the parent's request. I think we need to separate these two things. And I'd just like to table the parent's request to the next meeting. If the, if the committee is so moved to, uh, to direct an evaluation of this policy to the policy committee, I think that's a separate motion, my opinion only. Um, if, if your motion is, includes referring to policy, then I guess my motion would include laying the entirety of his motion on the table. Okay, but what, deferring it to next week with the parents, what is that going to do for us? Deferring, if, even if we split this up, what is that going to do for us next week? Because we're going to be in the same boat. We have the policy. We have the same information, you know. Like to it, it, it's it, it's a it's a tough situation. I'd like to clarify that I, I've withdrawn my motion. Yep, we so don't have a motion on the floor okay. currently. Um, so, in light of that, in the spirit of trying to divide this and just get at least half of it over, I will make a motion that this be this policy be referred to the policy subcommittee, without acting on the other end of it yet. Okay. Do I have a second? I second, second that. Okay. okay. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Abstain. 
uh, and I'm, I'm going to comment on that. I mean, I wish I didn't know anything about Rainbow Workshop because I'm. I That's be, what's killing me. I would be prepared to provoke that tonight. So, but then my problem becomes: what about somebody that comes before us who comes from a facility that I don't know? So, I'm going to abstain on that until I get more information. Okay. So discussion on Mrs. Ricciotti's request, and at the rate we're going, she's not going to be home in time to see her children to bed. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Our, our next meeting it's is February, next, next Wednesday. Wednesday. Is in a week, and the, and the meeting after 26th. that? The 26th. The 26th. And in terms of timelines for enrollments and stuff like that, the 26th. Well, the packets will be going. I think the packets go out. Where's Paul? Is he here? It just, I was just over there today. They, they begin to go out. I mean, it, it's not going to have an impact. It's not going to have an impact right. for the I mean, 26th. We're going to get the information to, to parents, so it's Can not, yeah. Sure, I'll recognize you. Would you be okay if we, at this point, had put you back on the agenda for the, oh, was it the 25th or the 26th? 26. 26, sorry. And that way you'd have a little more time to prepare. Whatever you, if you tell me what documentation you want, I can get it. I mean, aside from bringing them here, they're, they're for the side and it's after their bedtime. But to me, that's just performing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I. The Department of Education's website. Yes, it says each town has a, has a different. If I was anywhere in it, I have to go. I live in Rockton. It was a problem. How long do I have to live in Rockton for? I've been told you can take them to private kindergarten and come back in first grade. I can't afford that. This is twins. We're talking about eleven thousand dollars for kindergarten. I need that for prom and following the wedding. Um, I don't see what going to a private kindergarten and coming back in first grade. Unfortunately, from our point of view, the Department of Ed dictates everything but the entrance age to school. I, I, I understand that. You know, they tell us what we should feed the kids in school. They do that, yeah. A million other things, you know. It's nothing against you or your family personally or against the Rainbow Workshop. It's just we're stuck in this quandary. Whatever. If you can point me in the direction of what information you want, I will provide. So I would like to uh, propose to the committee that we put this off till the 26th. And we have Mrs. Stefrino here or to discuss this with the school committee. I, we've just we've just been told that Ms. Stefrino did have a meeting, so um, maybe just by the short amount of time or whatnot. I mean, there's potentially information that we could have gotten tonight that might have been helpful. I, I mean, I think just it's been a lengthy debate. I know it's it's stressful on. Uh, Mrs. Ricciardi, and um, I think moving it to the 26th might just be helpful. clarification. We would not do that for any parent because you have a policy that does not include bringing forward a principal to provide you with information. And as another point of clarification, all students who come in at that age are ready. The screening we do doesn't test for readiness. It tests for things that we may need to do to make learning better for that student. That's all. So that whether it's a that's why it's a black and white, 
And if you're going to do that, my suggestion to you would be that before you ask an individual principal to come in and do that, that you establish your policy subcommittee to figure out what information you would want as a policy because what one principal may give you, another one may not, and then you run into that same issue that one principal believes that. And you're also putting principals in the predicament to make some decisions that are subjective. That's why it's black and white. A and if you would like us to create a policy that included for those students who do not reach the age, here is what we're going to give you for readiness. You certainly can do that. And that's where the expertise of the practitioners the principal and all those who are at that level, they could provide the policy subcommittee with that information, which would be then, you know, listen to them and, and make that decision as to what is important and what potentially they could. Um, and you may also find in some other policies that exist that there may be something in the policy that specifically says, before you go to a school committee, here's what we have. I, I know there were a few that had that. I remember seeing that a few years ago. But the, just a suggestion, I thought. I'm good. Um, having heard that just now, that the additional information that's being asked for is, is not potentially possible to get in, in the, is that, am I understand, what the question that you've asked or, or the request that you've made can't be fulfilled in the way that you're, you're asking for it? I'm not sure. I guess I'd need to know what objective information or data, in addition to what your, the parent has provided, would you want the school to provide since the students aren't in our school? That's all I'm asking. Okay. And I can help Mrs. Safrino know what that would be so that you could make a judgment based on data. I, I guess to put it matter-of-factly, absent a review of policy and, and setting up some better guidelines for a future case, um, I don't think we're qualified to make the decision, even if even if Ms. Safrino is making a subjective judgment in this case. I think it would be valuable to complete what we're able to have for information in this case. I could be dead wrong, but um, but we we don't have any guidance right now. So you know, with all of this effort, I I would hate to to lay it aside and and just say, well, we don't have the policy yet, so it's the date is the date. Uh, so let I me know, I'm, having, I'm having some difficulty. Throw this out. So if your subcommittee determines that you would like to have some data collected and the group, including your principals and other practitioners, can provide you with some types of, of assessments that would be appropriate for kindergarten, one of the struggles is that there aren't a lot because of that age, uh, then you would, have to, you would have to develop, you know, what would be the criteria based on that assessment that a student would meet that would then allow that to happen. And you also then would have to understand that there would be a, a lot of additional time that could be spent by people coming forward requesting that. Because what we do is simply say, you've reached that magic age, good, bad, or indifferent. And now that you've reached that age, when you come in and get that documentation, we do these screening. And then we use that information along with our teachers and their expertise that they do later on in the fall because things happen between the summer and the fall for us to make some determinations as to what students' needs are. So that's all. Go ahead. I, I don't want to keep belaboring. I, um, no, I, I just don't <laughs> Dr. know where to go with this Dr. Nash is shaking her head. No, um, I, it, that's why. <laughs> it's it's, it's um, the dilemma that every district, yeah. that's why they have a hard and fast number I'm, because you cannot, that's the, the issue that you're struggling with. I, I get that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to. At gonna, this point, I'll entertain a motion to the table is till the 26th. Oh. I, I'll make a motion that we table the request until a future date. But we need to have the policy subcommittee review the policy. I mean, in, in, until we change the, pol some well, of the policy, I don't see how you can move forward on it. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to table, and there's no discussion on it. So uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So, so the motion, motion fails. The motion fails. It's time sensitive. Oh, if if but, you uh, were. Can I? 
Go ahead. If I may, uh, um, when Chris was, was shaking her head, the, what I was going to say is let's say in some form or other our building principal interacts with the, with the Richardis and she comes to us and she says, you know, looking at all of this information and having spent some time, I, I think that this student would do fine. All right. So the student is enrolled and at some point during that year, the realization is made it was a bad choice. What's our exposure? What's, what's gone wrong? What do we, what do, we do? How, what, what happens at that point? I just, I just want to understand. If, if we have a student enrolled and they're having difficulty keeping up or something like that, what, what, what goes on then? RTI kicks in, I would imagine. Some form of it in kindergarten. Well, all kinds of, I mean, I, and I can't, fed evaluation I can't speak to it because I don't know what the nature of the issue might be, you know, but obviously if a student is enrolled in school and is having difficulty, there are all, there are all kinds of interventions that can happen. We could such refer, as, such we could as, refer a student for testing if we felt that that was the case. Um, we could obviously use response intervention if it's a literacy issue. There could be some support services, you know. But it's, I don't know what the relevancy is of that point. It's I'm, not really. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm I trying to ask questions. That's my point. Um, if the audience would like to know. Um, I, I apologize if I'm not if I'm not making a point that, that you Davenport, care for. Just, just I, I get it. Thank uh, you. My the question I'm asking is is what happens? You know, I, I mean, I it sounds like we want to not involve Ms. Safrino or something like that for fear that a subjective opinion could lead to a wrong. I mean, what what are well, we, we can't involve what are we trying to do? From Dr. Nash's, we cannot legally involve Mrs. Safrino because the policy says what it says and we've got to follow the policy. Well, I think what she would be looking for would be what criteria would you want her to use in bringing forward to you a recommendation? Do we, you know, and that's what I'm saying. I want to be able to give her the guidance because that certainly is going to come to fruition with other the other principal too. So. It's my understanding the way that the procedures of voting and everything work, and if somebody knows to the contrary, please stop me, that if we take a vote on this tonight and it fails, Mrs. Richardi would be free to petition again, perhaps during February. I am inclined from the information that we have to be in favor of doing this. I don't know, it does not sound like any information that we may seek from any other source would lead us to any sort of contrary decision. And on that basis, and again with that understanding that if it failed she would be free to petition again, I am going to move that we grant the waiver so that we may dispose of this issue. No, we could. The tabling was tied. The motion did not The tabling carry. motion failed. Okay. It was three. 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 Yep. Thank you. All right. Do I have a second? Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discu further discussion on the motion? Can I just clarify so I know what the motion is? The motion, motion is to grant the way of work. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Opposed. Abstaining. Anybody abstaining? I have two Abstain. abstentions. Motion fails. Motion. Oh, no. Oh, no. Motion, motion passes. No, the motion carries. Okay. Motion carried. So the waiver is granted. Yeah. Okay. You're all set. Thank you. You're Sorry for the delay. So pursuant, pursuant to this, since you are well aware that, that you will probably get more requests, so are we still on to have the policy subcommittee look at this? Is that still the plan? We have a motion that passed for that. Okay. At all this right. point, I'll entertain a motion that we not allow any more petitions to the school committee until we have an updated approved policy from the policy subcommittee. I move that we entertain no further waiver requests until we have a report from the policy subcommittee. And when, and when would we, when is that? Because we're looking at some 
time-sensitive issues for parents who may want to with information going out. When do you think, when is the next meeting of the policy subcommittee? I'm going to have Amy book one tonight, okay. hopefully for next All Thursday, right. about 4.30, superintendent's conference room. Let's see if we can uh, get the second on that motion. All right, can I get a second on that motion? Mr. Clark? Motion dies. Okay, moving on to the next. What's that? I'm sorry. <laughs> What's that? Uh, the motion to not hear any more uh, okay. waiver requests. Right. But we are pending uh, recommendation from the policy right. subcommittee. We granted the waiver, and the policy subcommittee is going to review the policy next Wednesday. Hopefully. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Okay, moving on now since we've gone till 10 of 8 and we have some young adults with slippery roads in town and stuff and we want to make sure they get home safely. Um, I'm going to move that they report to the committee. We're going to take them out of order so we can get them home. Thank you. So we just went around school and we checked up with some of the clubs to see if there was anything interesting going on. Obviously there are a lot of clubs at school and we couldn't report on all of them. We could, but we'd be here for a very long time. So we tried to keep it to some things that important things happen, big thing ha big things happen. So I'm going to start with um, some of the clubs that we have at school. Um, one of them is the math team. And last month they placed third in their meet and they're preparing for their next one now. Um, the musical this year is called The Drowsy Chaperone. And we started rehearsals this past week. And it seems to be a really good group of kids with a lot of energy. So if you want to set aside the dates of May 1st, 2nd, or 3rd to come support the Upon Equip players, that's the dates of the show. Um, the National Honor Society is doing good as well. They um, hosted a coat drive this past month, and what they did was they instituted <coughs> different uh, groups to help with the complete various community projects. So they have a group for each of the schools, the middle school, the intermediate school, and those groups go over and they help tutor kids who are struggling in subjects, or they help with school activities or events. I know that there's an Artapalooza at the Swampset Elementary School, and I know a lot of the people in that school group are going to go help with that. Um, we also have some groups here at Aponicrit. We have a science group, I think, that helps with tutoring, and we have a health and news group that helps the nurse with her, her billboard out by the cafeteria, and it has information on different health projects. And then finally, the AFS Club, which is also known as the International Student Exchange Club, just had its annual AFS weekend about two weeks ago. We had exchange students from all around the world that go to different schools and a bunch of different districts came and they stayed with families here for the weekend. I had a boy from Germany who lives in Westport. He stayed with me and my family for three nights and two days. On Friday they came to school with us and they went to a bunch of different classes and talked about their culture and how life is for them here. And then we went bowling, and then we hung out and had a little gathering. And then on that Saturday, we went to Boston and visited the Science Museum, and they seemed to really like that and have fun interacting. And then we went to Quincy Market for lunch and shopping. Very good. I have a few more clubs to report on. Um, our DECA chapter went to districts um, in Falmouth, and there were 142 students that competed and 53 of them were able to qualify for states, which will be in March, which will be in Boston. Other students that didn't qualify can have other ways of qualifying to compete by writing papers and making different competitions online, virtual business and stuff like that. Um, SHAPE, which is uh, Spirit Community and Peer Education, um, had a gong show planned, which is actually like a teacher talent show, and the students are the judge, kind of flipped around. Um, but it got canceled because of the snow last week. Um, so we're working now on Mad Night, which is like a student talent show, um, which is the second weekend in March. And then Student Council um, had students make small donations like after Christmas for the Kudo family who lost their house in the fire, and they're matching the funds that we made. Student Council is going to match that in money to donate to the family. Um, and then they have their CMS 
C-Mask lock-in on Friday night. So they stay over at Middleborough High all night and are up and do all different student council things. And then I have a quick athletic update. Um, boys swim are repeat co-champions uh, co of the Southern Swim Conference. That was announced this week. Um, and the girls basketball play Friday night. And it's a big game because they believe they have a championship potential if they win. Um, to have the SEC title this year, which will be a big thing. Born, they play Born home at six thirty Friday night. That's all I have. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Great things happening in the high school. Great job. Please drive safely, so we can get more great reports from you. Okay. Next on the agenda, approval of minutes for seven seventeen. 2013. Move to accept the minutes dated 7 17 13. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, abstained. Motion carries. Move to accept the minutes of 8 14 13. Thank you, Mr. Goodfellow. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any abstentions? Motion carries. Community speaks. Going once, twice. <laughs> so I was a little upset hearing this. Um, the answer was very clear, black and white, yes or no. The discussion that you had and for the length of time that you had really shouldn't have taken place today. It needed to take place back in December when that request came forward. But very quickly, you granted that waiver. Um, Mr. Oliveira didn't have to bring forth any documentation. You didn't ask if he um, went to see Mr. LaBelle at Assawamsett since he's a Lakeville resident. Um, you didn't ask or say that his request came in in such a short period of time that didn't have enough time to consider it. All I have to say is December, you open Pandora's box. You cannot close it now for school year 014, 015 because you've made that request in December. So there may be more parents coming. And so you'll have to listen to them. And it's a yes or no answer. And you know what? The answer has to be yes from now on because of your decision in December, not for today. Thank you. We'll take that under advisement. Anyone else for community speaks? Okay, closing community speaks. Moving on. Old business policy, um, school committee policy, B E D H. Public comments and participations at school committee third and final reading. At this point, um, I will entertain a motion to accept this policy. So, a couple of minutes to I'm just looking at something. No, not a couple of minutes. Got kind of a few seconds to just want to have a question to ask. I apologize. Um, I just noticed it at the last minute. If somebody could point point out to the contrary, is there anything in here that would um, direct? all discussion through the chair or prohibit discussion between member to member of the audience or, or something to that effect because that can be um, that can be quite disruptive in the, in the process of a meeting and I it just dawned Since on me. Since we uh, says right in the policy book that we abide by Robert's rules of order and stuff and that shouldn't I, be an issue. Okay. Yeah. And it does say that in the policy book that I know. Okay, it's a bit of an oblique thing, but um, if, if, if that's how that's covered. Yeah. Nine days might be broad enough if you look at nine, because it would, you know, the, the chair at any time could determine that appropriateness because of the disruption. So maybe that could also yeah. cover it. Yeah, number three covers it. The chair may, the may limit uh, in, at his or her discretion may limit, it, limit individual comments. So this is the third and final reading. Can I get a motion to uh, accept this? 
you have it. Yes. Yes, we will. Yes. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? All, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, FY15 budget. We'll, we'll get this reposted or I think normally we put it up. Community over. Speaks is closed. motion back yes um, mr. McHugh made a motion to accept the public comment and participation at school committee meetings policy as it was presented for its third reading today and that was seconded by mr. Kulikovich okay. we don't read it out loud to the community it's in the packet it's posted on the website we review it and then approve it and it's not policy and it's now policy Moving on to uh, FY15 budget. Thank you. I'd like to uh, update the school committee on um, what's happened since we presented to you on January 11th an initial presentation of the uh, two budgets that the school committee had requested. The first budget was a recommended, uh, excuse me, the first budget was a level services budget, if you recall. There were two options of that. Uh, one was uh, a level uh, services minimum budget, one was a level services recommended budget, and then the other budget, which the committee had also requested, was an additional needs budget. We met uh, last week and this past Monday with uh, both uh, town officials, uh, including the town administrators slash managers, the board of selectmen, and, and the chairman of the FinCom committee from both towns. So what I'd like to do this evening is just simply to give you just my thoughts and certainly uh, Fred can present also uh, being present at the meeting and uh, also we have a selectman, uh, board of uh, selectmen and the chair from Lakeville and he was certainly there at the Monday meeting. But our budget update um, information that I can share with you at this time simply is um, twofold. One, uh, I think the meetings were useful. I think listening to both groups of individuals uh, come back to us, we gave them not your entire book, uh, but we gave them uh, summary sheets that you have in your book. One is the summary of the level services. I provided them with a backup on one aspect of the level services, which is was an expensive piece of the recommended, which is the teaching and learning resources. I wanted them to understand particularly since we were asking for $121,000, what that really uh, meant. And then we also showed them the additional needs budget and in that the prioritized list of additional needs. We made it very clear that the, uh, there were no new hires of personnel until you get to the additional needs budget. That was something that, that uh, we pointed out. I think it was a healthy, productive discussion. I think they were very complimentary of Fred and the administrators for the process that we went through and for the information that we presented them and we told them that this was the initial pass the school committee had seen this this is also posted for the public um, on our website the initial PowerPoint is posted on our website for you so that information is there uh, we did not get any definitive information from Freetown um, they they did not give us um, any indication one way or the other certainly I think they echoed the concerns that all all towns have about funding budgets but we did not get any kind of percentage or number or anything like that from them and when we met with Lakeville uh, same thing I think I asked for some kind of information or any kind of um, comments or thoughts and I would say probably the comment or feedback that I received was that uh, they were asking all departments to stay within a two and a half percent Is that I think accurate reflection what was it so uh, what we and as we indicated to both of them this is really preliminary we're still looking at a lot of things happening a lot of changes can potentially happen uh, Fred will talk about one of the budget assumptions in a minute that we had talked about as to what information we currently have and that's about health insurance you remember one of the assumptions was that we would be able to fund that increase in our budget the current figure that we have would be able to fund that and I Fred has information on that we're still getting, obviously, governor figures are just out. We still have lots of other figures. No, what I'm 
looking to uh, get from the school committee is next steps. What is it that you might like us to prepare or come back to as the administrative team to the, to the school committee um, as we move forward through the process? If I may ask, uh, Labello, if I may ask you, um, when the override was passed for the schools, didn't you figure in there, um, was my understanding there was a sustainability for the schools at 3.5%? as part of the override? I believe we... Two and a half percent of our budget, of our money that we gave you, is going to factor into the override. You're going to remember, we're only late, though. You know, three Understood. Understood. Mr. Davenport, you were very active with the Regional Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. What was your understanding of? Um, the number 3.5% at times was used as a, a not to exceed for our school budget. Um, how that broke down, um, I believe that was stated as an overall um, and not specific to each town. Okay. Um, there's a wealth of discussion on the impact to each town um, to be had. Um, I'd, I'd have to go, I'd, have, I'd like to go back and see if I can find something that would document three right. and a half or two and a half. I'm going purely on recollection. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, well, what's the uh, recommendation from the school committee for the direction of the superintendent? the administration on the budget looking for some recommendations that's a, that's a lot there um, what well next steps I'm looking for next, next steps step. <coughs> um, what would you like us to do okay next uh, next step maybe for next meeting if if we could go back and um, revive a um, letter that Lakeville sent to us regarding the amount for the override okay. and that the way it was calculated um, it actually came out to more than 1.5 million and Lakeville uh, sent us a letter saying rather rather than hold to the 1.5 million um, they would be fine to go with the larger amount but they made the request that that overage which was what 125,000 ish <coughs> what's that <coughs> to the capital budget the, 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 the letter that Lakeville sent asking that um, a certain amount be set aside for capital. 150,000. And I, I don't know how that was. I'll wait. Yeah, I, I can actually, uh, through the chair, answer that for you now. We, okay. uh, we did, in fact, put 150,000 um, into the budget as capital. Uh, to date, we've spent about 125,000 of that on capital equipment, primarily equipment uh, for snow snow removal. But we have, in fact, spent it on capital, and I clearly will spend the other 25,000 before the year's up. So we, um, while I never actually saw the letter, my predecessor did put that into the appropriate line so the the money is there and is being spent in that way as, as well as a corresponding percentage from Freetown based on a 5842 uh, yeah because I think that that's where the total amount came from because Lakeville yeah that was as part of the assessment sheet that uh, again my predecessor had done and he did in fact send that to both communities and they're paying based upon that all right, because we also have information on a, a range of under $2 million to somewhat over $2 million of capital needs. And ev even at 250000 we're only scratching the surface. But, you know, to sort of honor the direction of the towns from last year and going forward, I, I, would, I, would, I would like to see at, at least some uh, minimum be applied to capital. 
and try to uh, try to muscle down some of the items on this list rather than it just be taken as the new new baseline number for the budget and then capital become a completely separate discussion I, I think it, you know I, I think you're right I think there are two two things one you're going to hear in a few minutes somewhere between a million eight to 2.14 million in capital needs those have been prioritized in those categories and I know you just got this information uh, we purposely did not present this as a three to five year plan because it's an enormous amount of money uh, and you're going to hear that about that and then later on sometime you know, probably in, in the next month or two you'll hear about the technology piece once we get that separate from that I think we're looking at an operational budget and I, I think there are two, two issues that need to be addressed or three issues if you will if you go back to the recommendation that is connected to the recommended level services with the offsets and granted two of those of the 900,000 are one time really offsets if you will unless you can look at next year's budget and and see that you have some savings in other areas the percentage with the offsets brings it down to 264 if you remember if you don't have that sheet and you probably don't 2.64 percent so it's within reason that we could go back to uh, with any direction the committee gives us to either X out things and look at other things and put them in what I'm saying is we could potentially get to two and a half percent that doesn't mean that that is an acceptable figure to Freetown but I'm just saying as a beginning point you know it certainly will do this it will give us um, and maintain the level of services with the staffing that we talk talk about that's critical uh, and it will also include some of those recommendations that the administrative staff has identified as needs not including personnel and if there if you want to redirect that pool of money to something else then that certainly is the committee's purview to do Go ahead. Hi. I would um, you know being very close and hopefully it's not a, a, a massive maneuver on your people's part um, I would be very interested in seeing what your two and a half percent oh, recommendation yeah. I mean, would be we, we can look at the list at recommended level services. You have those in those categories, and I can go back and ask that. If you want me to do, do something else under the recommended level services, that's what I would kind of need to do. So if the committee wants me to take a sum of money for capital and put it in there, we certainly can do that, and we can look at these other areas. But, I, but we can obviously, 2.64 is close to 2.5 that doesn't mean that it's going to be supported in, in both towns we may hear differently I just need some next steps directions from the committee on, on budgeting all right so should we um, is it the feeling of the committee that we have the superintendent come back to us next week with a 2.5 percent a budget that shows an increase of 2.5 percent with the capital component that mr. Davenport yes okay okay and you may get some information this evening in the capital plan when you see those uh, as to what may be areas that you'd like us to, to address. Okay. All right. okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. The capital will be separate. <coughs> just, you want the, just one clarification. Within that 2.5%, you want some sum of money for capital. Yeah. Uh, right. That's right. what we're saying. Right. Which was thing. Okay. In, I, yeah. I, okay. I'm sorry. No, well, ahead, it, it, no uh, I just wanted to give you the um, update that Dr. Mm -hmm. Nash mentioned. Um, we built the budget with the idea that if the, assuming, you know, the staffing that's in there and, you know, um, that we could sustain up to 6% of an increase in the health insurance. Uh, we did get notified by our provider that the average of their school districts that they have is going to be 5.4 percent and they'll range anywhere from you know down as low as zero we have 11 of the 12 months as they use as a baseline good results so assuming the final month that they use it doesn't turn into you know something really way out of the ordinary we should do substantially better than the 5.4 percent so the the theory of you know, sustaining it without any additional increase should be good. One question. When I'm looking at the, uh, the 
potential offsets as you're going forward? Would it be possible? Um, we had that surge of students showing up at Gray's and needed to suddenly get teachers last year. Is there any way to encumber funds or something in what you're doing so that when we talk about using offsets of Circuit Breaker E&D and putting all that money in a pile that we <laughs> don't I do all of it? hopefully in, in your book we've addressed what we know now yeah. You know, well, that's what I'm saying, moment. but in that right. moment, right. to yeah. not use all of the potential offset just so that we're buffered and a little there. Yeah, and I don't, the rest, I don't of, the, the rest right. of it looks very good. Right. I saw the 21s, I saw the 19s, I, I saw some great if stuff. If the committee directs me to put aside um, money, that means that it goes somewhere else if you don't need it. That's or at least not to use up all of Circuit Breaker and E&D in the offset part. Well, we're, we're planning, although primarily as a contingency for special education, in the budget we built, the theory was to use 300000 of the 422000 that we would get in Circuit Breaker as a contingency, primarily thinking towards special ed, but, you know, obviously if we didn't need it there, it's a contingency. And we did have the other uh, special ed contingency of about 60000 so unlike the present budget, you know, while one might argue it's not a big enough contingency, there is a contingency. Okay. And it also looks like obviously okay. SPED's better okay. equipped this year right. going into 15, so, so yeah. that's good. There's, I wish I could say that there might be a great likelihood that we have some drop substantially that we could do a reassignment. Yeah. Um, you know, we're already going to be doing that, as we indicated, um, because of smaller numbers at one of our elementary schools that we can uh, reassign staff. but. In essence, you know, the unknown is always kindergarten because you don't know, uh, in, there's no, other than using census and collecting information that we get from the town hall, you really look at your historical patterns of what's happened and where there's an anomaly in that one year you went from 80 to 52 and then it goes back up. So that's your big unknown. You typically try to inflate that number by at least 10%. The fact that you're right, that all of a sudden you get move-ins, um, yeah. In one grade, it always happens. What we tend to do is go back, looking at those charts we gave you, and say to the principal, okay, have we had some move out, and can we reassign a teacher if it happens? We may say, no, we can't. We just can't reassign, because now that makes this number go up a little bit more than we maybe want to. So, it, it, yeah, it, I'm not... I've not ever historically done that. It doesn't mean that you can't, you know, set aside. You'd set aside fifty, fifty-five thousand dollars, roughly, whatever you want for uh, the, a teacher. That's what you're doing, kind of saying, uh, given the fact that you don't have the ability to reassign because numbers don't drop or anything like that, and you can't do that um, other than elementary because of certification issues. And Mr. Davenport. A question for, for Fred. <clears throat> you said 11 of 12 months are, are in for um, projecting our uh, next year's health. Um, what does that mean in terms of timeline? I mean, that's um, obviously going to be more than 30 days before you hear. You're right, yeah. Uh, we probably will not get a final answer, unfortunately, for probably close to two months. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I only mean that on that's the... I mean, that's the way they do their formula, so at least, you know, um, you know, our representative thought that clearly, you know, unless something radical happens, you know, we should be the on a figure that's substantively lower than the 5.4 percent. But timing-wise, we're, we're probably going to have to go with something in the budget that is not a firm and final figure. Thank you. Any other discussion on the budget? I, I do have. You know, Go ahead. Please. Go ahead, Mr. Davenport. Um, this, this is budget, but it's really more, you know, paperwork and stuff. Um, I sat um, for an afternoon con uh, about SPED and um, the shortage uh, that occurred in the fall. And I was given a, a great wealth of information, but there was one sheet. Um, and I never, I never really got back to you guys about it that much. There's sort of like a working sheet that passes back and forth between, uh, you know, our our, uh, our finance person at the time and SPED, and that was supposed to be the basis for properly budgeting. And, you know, when I asked to sit and get some more information about that shortage and how it happened, um, 
and I was very gracious for all the information that everybody gave, but that one particular sheet, which was kind of critical, we found, we found that that sheet just constantly gets overwritten every time there's any kind of new information, so there's no history to it. At least that's the way it was presented to me. Now what sheet do you have? Sure, it's, like a one, it's like a one-page sheet that SPED, uh, SPED presents the for all its expenses. The sheet that indicates generally the program, a student mm -hmm. by initial or number or grade or age. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I don't know the title of it, but yeah, I, I yeah. think Fred knows the I think the I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's called the Anticipated Out-of-District Placement Sheet. Is that, do you think that? Uh, this was like a, almost like a recap sheet for the SPED, SPED well, budget. Out of district on district tuitions, was it? Because that's the only sheet that we've seen that they've done perhaps I mean at the time when I was asking questions I was being told this this sheet was handed th this sheet was handed to the finance director and and you know yeah, any I, I, any errors you know it was all there but then I was like can I have the sheet that was handed to handed it out in February and the answer was well no because this document is just written over every time there's any new information my, my question is is there a way that we cannot do that because it doesn't seem like a best practice if we're doing budgeting to just constantly overwrite a key document like that if it's if it's the document that's the out of district so that's kept by the secretary to the director of student service and then they would update that as new out of district placements change both in and out so it's constantly evolving the one we are working with it, that we gave you and i think you have it in your packet um, in your book um, indicates what we know, and that would that gives you that total figure. Yeah. Does that okay. help you? Is that what you're yeah. talking I, it, about? We can hold in place. I, I think the the problem last year was, you know, the information was created, it was changed, and then it was changed <coughs> as it changed. Um, the information <coughs> we gave you, which had that sheet in it, I mean, we can hold that one in place as we, you know, as it changes positively and negatively. I, I think the problem was. The backup wasn't kept; it was just updated. And can we can make sure that we keep the backup and as we update it? Yeah. Uh, to the, through, not sure we're talking about the same. Right, right through the uh, uh, through the chair. What I'll do is I'll go back through the paperwork that I was given that day, and I'll just privately, sure. um, right. you know, yeah. we can go over that sheet again. Just I just am looking for history and documentation because it was no, the one sorry. area where we couldn't right. agree. Yeah, we, yeah. And thank you. Any other further? Are you all set, Dr. Nash? I am. Thank you. Further direction. Okay. What I'd like to do now is, since we've been taking everybody out of order tonight, I'd like to get Mr. Souza up next so we can go home and go to bed because he was in early this morning getting the parking lots and stuff ready for the <laughs> students to come to school and the faculty yeah. and staff. So. I'm going to give you just a bit of an overview and then Bob will proceed from there. Um, in terms of the documents you have, you have the, the larger document. Uh, which is the capital plan, and then you have the the one on the smaller paper, which is the uh, you know the security issues. Uh, essentially, this was prepared the larger document by looking at what Bob had had in the file from the past by seeking information from the principals, and we started by then trying to put it into a three-year plan. Uh, when we saw the um, amount of money it entailed and the value of it, we, we backed off the three-year plan and thought we would be better off listing it in a format such as the one you have. Um, the numbers in there, in some cases, are based on actual quotes. In some cases, they're estimates. I mean, we, so, you know, they vary in terms of their degree of accuracy. Uh, we believe they're all reasonably good numbers, but some of them are, are firm numbers and some of them are not. Um, we also were trying to make the point that, you know, we used a set of priorities that you can see in the left-hand corner. And, um, you know, with safety, structural, you know, phase replacement and improvement. Um, to some degree, the categories merge together at certain points, and so they're not, you know, there's a certain level of subjectivity to this. 
Uh, I'll also point out that we did budget in the budgets that we sent you an amount of money for capital. It's uh, about 125000 So we did put forward some capital in the budget. The primary thing, though, that is included in the budget is the first item on there, which Bob can talk to specifically, the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we are going to get a letter mandating that we do certain work there. So we didn't look at that as very discretionary. And um, so I mentioned that in terms of, uh, you know, th that is in fact in the budget. Uh, from there, um, you know, Bob can certainly entertain any of your questions or I don't know if you want to present, he will be presenting some information also, but he will also take the questions. Yeah, thanks, buddy. You made my life really easier. Um, do you have any questions on the <laughs> prejudice? <laughs> what he said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I got a. We could actually go through this if you wish. No, I got a question on the last sheet, though. The last sheet, yeah. Yeah, we've got. Uh, $189,900 of capital request on buildings that we don't own, the two elementary schools. According to the regional agreement, anything over 5000 goes back to the towns. Right. We thought it was important to include that in the capital plan just so that you folks are aware of the need. Um, we didn't want any surprises coming down the road, uh, and we thought it would be a good idea to put a cost next to it. Okay. Regardless of who owns the buildings, and right. we, we understand the regional agreement says that, but we wanted to make sure that you were, we included all of the buildings that our students are in with respect to the priorities for needs, whether they're you know, safety needs or structural needs or improvement or repla phase replacement. We to this, 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 yeah, excuse me, this, this was something that we felt that you really, you folks, I don't think really had no, a grasp you. on, and we, we really felt that you should see it. You know, because these are really these, these are real things with real, really big numbers. This is pretty much everything that you showed me when I came for a tour there in the summer. A large part of it, yes. Yeah, this is like except for taking me up on the roofs and stuff. You know, it's pretty much. The the office still open. I want to note these. that only there are only <laughs> two that noted as safety issues because that's one of the priorities, and certainly that's the first priority that you look at. So just for purposes of. Um, of people who are watching this evening, uh, one of the categories or priority ratings um, really is a safety right. or what we have identified as a potential safety issue. Uh, both of those are at AES to no surprise because of the age of the building, if you will. Right. Um, the glass replacement and the other has to do specifically around the kiln right. um, in, in the art room. So everything else uh, falls under structural. Uh, phase re replacement or improvement, which and some of those overlap a little bit. Okay, let's get on to part two, which yeah, is. I'd be more than willing to walk with any, any one of you folks. And, uh, it was a great tour. Put a face to this. So, you know, especially the wastewater treatment plant going underground. If was I awesome. um, might, through the chair, yep, um, go just ahead. ask. I know that this is a lot, and we're not asking um, for you this evening to take any action or give us any direction, but I certainly think the purpose of putting together something as comprehensive as this um, indicates somewhere around a million eight to two, two million plus. Um, with really what I've identified as I understand it, and certainly I've toured them and you've toured them, uh, real needs, needs somehow in the future to come back with some, some hardcore way that you're going to at least begin to identify these. I mean, we can nickel and dime these, and I can put some money in the operational budget, but it by no means is going to address these issues. And you know, like the old adage, pay me now or pay me later, I mean, we saw that illustration, I think, very clearly with the pool. Uh, you know, and that's just one of the many areas that are addressed here. So this is just one piece of this. So if we could in the future maybe put this on as an agenda item and get some ideas from you as to how uh, you might like us to go back and come back to you with some kind of a plan to address this, so at least, um, or whether you want to table it, but. I think we do need to address it at a further date. Mr. Davenport has a question or comment. Yeah, um, I just have one question on one particular item, um, and it's, it's under Grace, and that is the, uh, the sheetrock on the underside of the main canopy. Yes. 
I think you've brought that up before. Yes. And um, yes. it's it's easy to see yes, what's going easy. on there. And and in a wind in a wind driven rain, especially in that case, and, and especially when you have a lot of humidity, the, the moisture just collects under there and just sits there. And mm -hmm. essentially, they just use sheetrock, and it's just gotten into the board and it's just falling down. Right. So my my comment or question there, one, I just wanted to know if any of that moisture is coming through the uh, the skylights. The I'm not they're not skylights was, proper, but it, yeah, there was a, a time was a prone back leak. when there, there was a, there was a leak there, but that was that's been since repaired. Okay. Uh, but no, it's essentially it's it's, um, it's atmospheric. Okay, and secondly, if that material is above people's heads and it's degrading, I'm I'm seeing a safety issue right. in there, so I'm questioning whether we or had, not we the had a is for. I, I'm sorry, we had a similar yeah. instance at the middle school where uh, we actually had a, a rain leader, a roof a roof drain leak, and it, it, it essentially just took the whole sheetrock um, ceiling down. Um, fortunately, it was on vacation day; there was nobody there. But yeah, yeah, that that, that was that can come down. Uh, that 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 was replaced. So I was just that's just that's a comment that that item item our might our need hope to. Would be that, you know, again, <clears throat> depending on how the budget goes, we remember a part of the three hundred thousand that we're suggesting you offset. We, we had identified initially, prior to the budget development, that we could use some of that. It certainly isn't going to tackle all of it to, to address some of these issues as we go forward. There still may be that potential if there's money above and beyond the 300000 And we would bring that forward to you. And you certainly, even looking at this, could identify some of those issues. Yeah. I believe you, um, Dr. Nash, have an update for us on the pool. I do. Uh, we do. And we can share that part of it. Actually, um, we, we, we're, we're in the process of getting quotes, uh, hard quotes, for um, the deck replacement, the tile deck replacement. Uh, we're also uh, getting some hard quotes for um, the HVAC heating, uh, air, air climate control system uh, for the pool room. Um, and we recently um, purchased a new chlorinated feeding system, so this new CO2 uh, piece. So um, the uh, Chemical feeder uh, should be replaced by next week, by next Friday. Excellent. That, that's actually on the on the what capital plan. What was the plan. cost of that, Bob? Just I know. Uh, about eight thousand dollars. So that came up as one of the three, and I think we looked at it as I think I spoke with you mm -hmm. um, a little bit as a, a real safety issue, especially with hearing the description of how it's done. So I see, so I saw no reason. It talk, Fred and I talked about it to try to address that as immediately. So that at least is one thing off the list. It's minor, but it's <coughs> one thing that we can address. The best, part, the best part about it, uh, Dr. Nash, is we'll probably end up saving money in the long run. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a better way to do things. You know, it's more cost effective. The, the word is slowly spreading around the pool community, and there's a lot of appreciative people, starting with Brett, who has to scoop the chlorine with his uh, bare hands. Yeah, well, no, well I, worried about health issues. There, you know, there was, I, I'll be honest with you. As you know, we, there were some immediate things that we addressed when we came on board and did the tours. and. Um, it's just ongoing issues, and, um, and for lack of a better word, you know, it, it's understandable, but when you're dealing with limited budgets, certain things go, and it can only go so long. So this plan addresses some things. It's a pretty large uh, amount of money, and I think the question going forward is, does the committee have any um, sense or thought or um, feeling that, that we should come up with some kind of financial way of addressing that and bringing back some scenarios to you? And we are certainly more than willing to do that. Okay. No further discussion on this piece. Um, Go ahead. Just uh, are we through with the district-wide security risk assessment scale? No, we haven't even got to that yet. Okay. I'm trying to dispense with. Okay, that's fine. Yep. All right. So, what I think we should do is review the larger sheet, and then we'll probably put it on the agenda for the 26th of February to um, give us a chance to digest it go through it. It's a lot of information. We just got it tonight. Thank you very much for putting it together. And thank you for giving the tour. Uh, Bob, I'm just curious. What, what are we using for ice melt here? Right now we're using um, pretty much whatever's cheapest. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we're getting um, some sand and salt from the town of Lakeville, uh, which we purchased off them by the truck. And uh, we're using um, it's uh, calcium chloride. And, and that's what I thought you were, and I, my question was, how is the cement holding up? Because mm -hmm. calcium chloride can do a job on that. Yeah, um, ultimately, um, there is some spalling 
um, you know, there is some degradation uh, in spots. Um, and essentially, it's, uh, we, we do at times have to lay it down heavy. Uh, we, we just don't have any, any choice, really. Um, the last thing we want is for these folks was to slip and fall. But there is, if you walk the campus, there are some spots where you can see where it's really been eating concrete. We have to be careful of how much salt we put on the ground because of our drinking water laws. Thank you. Thank you. All right, on to um, district-wide security risk assessment scale. Just a precursor, I know that it w I think uh, Mr. Goodfell had asked, um, could we get a report on that? And we wanted to separate this out, so just so the committee knows that these costs are not included in, in your capital plan. But do note that in the recommended level services budget, there is a placeholder of $75,000 that could make some impact, albeit little, uh, on this plan. Go ahead, Mr. Goodfell. Um, actually, this is just a, an overall observation, and I did ask for uh, us to uh, revisit this, and so thank you very much for having it here this evening. Um, the only thing that I, I question, this is a very, very comprehensive and inclusive uh, type of document, and is it wise for us to have our security posture put into record of such and so accessible? Actually, I think that there's... Um a thing that we can do this in executive session. I can't remember the number off the top of my head. Just, just a question. Mm -hmm. I think it's number seven, if I'm not mistaken. So obviously they're already out there, but at least the status would not be going forward. Well, certainly, in, in certainly in other uh, other meetings, uh, if, if I may say, yeah, that you know we we've had a presentation from from our school resource officer and others who have performed a, a risk assessment. And, you know, this, we have had some updates in the past. Was the, this the, provided as a public document back when it initially came out? If it was, and it's a public record right now. I don't, when initially, I think it was last year. I'm, I, I couldn't answer that. I probably, okay. um, but does it need to continue to be in as far as the, up, the updates go? I think we can. I'm just asking if you think that if, if you think it wise that we, you know, we can talk about these things certainly, but do we need to be telling everyone where we are with it? Is that wise? I'm not trying to hide anything. Good point. No, we can. You know, if the committee would choose, we can certainly come back to say that you know numbers, you know, blank, blank, and blank have been done or not. Uh, I mean, we we have it for information. I I don't know if I hate to say let's go to council and find out, but. You know, it may be prudent for us to the make sure that we are being as cautious as we as we can be with this. And so, with that in mind, I guess the most appropriate thing would be to uh, make a motion to table discussion on the district-wide security risk assessment for this evening. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Aye. Okay, thank you very much, Bob. I'm just trying to quickly look it up, so just bear with me. Uh, reason number four, to discuss the deployment of security personnel or devices or strategy with the respect thereto. And I don't know about mm -hmm. switching yeah. horses in yeah. midstream. I Only that, unfortunately, yeah. this is already, if you, has, is a public document. If you brought it, and I don't know, right. since I wasn't here, if it was brought forward and it. What are the updates the required? Uh, to continue yeah, to be. No, we certainly don't. We, we, right. you know, we, quite frankly, don't have to come back. I mean, if you give us a blanket approval to move forward, and one of the reasons you'd bring it back would be um, certainly because we're, we want your approval to spend money. Mm. And, and, you know, so that would be a reason why you might. We could simply come back at a later date to say we're doing X, Y, and Z if you are um, fine with what you see on this list. You know, we're moving forward with all the number twos or whatever. And give you an, an update. Uh, number two at this building is this cost. February 6th, executive session for reason number four. Okay. As long as it's kosher, that's not fine with that. Yeah. It says right in there. Okay. Works. Would you like Bob Susan to be present for that? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's Wednesday, right? Yep. Yeah. Wednesday. Not the fifth? Oh, yeah. the fifth. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I get <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> 
much going Freaking on. Me out. Yep. Freaking me out. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> February 5th. <coughs> I'll call the weather people, make sure you don't have to come in early that day. Okay. Yeah. No snow. Okay. okay. Not as early as the call I get or the text I get. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on to. Uh, New business. Um, thank you, Mr. Souza. Uh, all of us received a um, email from a group called the Common Core Study Group. I included in your packets a letter from them. Um, myself, uh, Mr. Kulikovich, and um, Keiko Oral from um, Lakeville, our uh, elected representative, went to their um, meeting about the Common Core um, study group, and they had a lot of information there. And um, on the back side, I took it upon myself to call a couple of um, other school committee uh, school committees in the state and um, just to find out what's going on with them in regards to the Common Core. And um, I'll pass out for you guys a resolution that MASHP, and I'm not looking for any action tonight from us, except for whether or not we want to have the Common Core Study Group come and do a presentation to us. Um, they have some real legitimate concerns with the Common Core. Um, and speaking with the other school committee chairs throughout the state, I spoke to um, Pantasket, which is a five district uh, region with 18 members. Um, well, um, we're in the process of speaking with Mashpee. I've spoken with um, Fall River. Um, I've also spoken with um, a couple others. Um, a lot of the school committees like us and like Mr. Clark has expressed the getting concerns with the constant um, unfunded mandates and um, requirements being passed down from both the state and the federal government without us as the local school committee is supposed to have jurisdiction and our local educators, um, quite frankly, with them being passed down and we being told that we have to implement them and just rubber stamp them. Um, Mr. Kulikovich has also done some uh, research on this issue. So basically, um, I've spoken with the Common Core Study Group. I met with them both um, on that Thursday night, and um, at another time, I went as um, a resident, um, and um, Keiko was there as well. And they would like to come and um, have a gentleman from the um, Pioneer um, Institute um, come in and speak to us about the Common Core and their issues with it. So um, at this point, I will. Um, recognize Mr. Kulikovich to uh, talk a little bit more about it. Um, so I, I attended the Fall River uh, session. Uh, it was probably a good, I don't know, 80 people or so there from around the region. Uh, my own background, just to talk about at least having the vocabulary to talk about this, um, I originally worked for the National Science Foundation on K-12 through math science curriculum reform uh, a long time ago. Uh, when I passed my MTEL certification years ago, it was for under the Massachusetts Frameworks. Uh, after that, you know, as any parent gets very busy, uh, kind of hears information coming and going. I was very excited that the Gates Foundation was out there doing something, contributing money. I was like, oh, Bill's spending money on education. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but then as I began to read more things, people popping up, there's concerns. Different states are concerned about Common Core. Um, and so, you know, and people had also raised it in conversation. So looking at all of that and then coming about to uh, hear what they said in this group, I think it would be very beneficial uh, for us to, to hear out uh, Ms. Wilcox and the Common Core Study Group here uh, so that we can evaluate our stance and uh, what's going on with Common Core in regards to our uh, district. And I think that uh, having them here would be pretty informative, to say the least, because I, now I am also concerned. Uh, the, what we were presented in brief was that Massachusetts is already uh, at the top or near the top of the nation. Uh, we've tested against uh, under the same scores and testing systems used for nations and have ranked very high on earth. So why are we going in and fixing things that aren't broken? Um, and, you know, so we just want to hear what, what it is that they're going to tell us about Common Core. And, you know, it's all independently verifiable stuff here. We don't just have to listen. We can go look. And that information is out there, and I encourage people to uh, have a look even before we hear this presentation. But I think it would be very beneficial. Okay, so I wanted this. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's certainly there is a lot of concern. I'm sure we all share it. Um, I got to line two of their letter, and it was clear that they're against Common Core. Is there a group who's advocating the Common Core? 
um, you know, if we okay, if, if we're listening to a group that, that is about to present to us um, the, you know, the, the deep evils of the Common Core, would it also not make sense for us to have some sort of presentation that would deliver the other side of the story? I certainly think an invitation to the Commissioner. Um, the Commissioner certainly led the state in this initiative. Um, lest we forget, it was directed solely by the Governor who agreed in 2010 or prior to that to sign for the state to get money. Um, and that's really, and as part of that, when you signed, you said, we will look at. Um, the, the Common Core um, is linked, of course, um, it, and it's only in English and math, lest we forget. It's only in two content areas. It's not in all of our other subject areas. Our framework still exists in all of the other major subject areas. Uh, it was a short window of time. I think the educators will tell you that uh, we, as educators, had the opportunity to uh, review it, uh, look at it, provide feedback, and before you know it, uh, the Board of Education, and, and you had the opportunity um, during that time to appear, at, you know, go to the Board of Education and express one way or the other concerns um, over that. Uh, so all of that happened very quickly, and I think anyone uh, w who d didn't, sit, didn't believe that was the case simply had to look at the window. It was brief compared to the, the frameworks, which seemed to have gone on forever ad nauseum as we were looking at them. I mean, it took multiple years just to review them and redo them and whatever. You know, I certainly am not an expert and couldn't sit down and do a comparison as to good, bad, or indifferent. I'd be interested to hear what the, you know, the understanding from both sides, certainly, as to, the, as to what is objectionable or not about it. But I, I'm not an expert and to, to make a comparison. I did not do that. They did put out um, what they call bridge documents, which I'm sure that the people on both sides would, would use to make some comparisons. So. So if it's the will of the committee, we will um, get some dates and we will we invite the other side too. We'll invite, invite the commissioner. Commissioner. we'll invite the commissioner, we'll invite the governor and or somebody from his office. I mean, the lieutenant governor does come to Fall River quite frequently. Okay. Um, um, the secretary of education um, is a former superintendent of schools, uh, Mr. Malone. Uh, whether or not um, he might be summoned if the commissioner cannot attend, that you would like us to contact, we certainly can do that. He is the highest ranking official um, in the state uh, with respect to education, above um, Commissioner Chester. He is, in essence, his boss, if you will. He sits on the cabinet for the um, governor and therefore would be an individual, too. That would certainly would be appropriate. And he was a superintendent of schools in Brockton for, for a period of time. So if all else fails, and certainly either one, it would be interesting to have I think it might even be nice to have a healthy debate between both. At least I would like to see that, but others may not. No, I'd just like to, if we're going to hear one side of the story, no, I'd, like, I, I'd like to hear I, both. Absolutely. And it could be very educational absolutely. for this committee yeah. and the public, and certainly invite the surrounding communities also to, to hear what has to be said. And we're very fortunate that, would you like us to it, check that on Lake Cam will be covering that. Both the commissioner, I will see both tomorrow, yes. actually, yeah. so, at a meeting. So yes, I can certainly speak to. Can you contact the um, Common Core Study Group? Okay. Okay, and, and get some dates out to I the committee, can. and also we'll contact the other make sure offices. that our um, EA, EAFL, sorry, I'm having trouble with acronyms tonight, <laughs> um, also gets invited too, because we want um, our expert educators to be there as well. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Clark. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't mind hearing from, that <clears throat> from those groups either. Um, <coughs> and maybe, the, maybe several of the committees could get together and draft a resolution to present at next year's state convention. Although I have to say I'm pretty cynical. I've seen a lot of school committees' resolutions drafted that are sent to the Department of Ed, and I can't think of one that was ever, was ever overridden. Uh, but I'm certainly willing to, to hear it. I mean, but from, from funding mandates to uh, eliminating MCAS, I've seen committees from all over the state present these resolutions, and they fall on deaf ears. So that doesn't mean it couldn't happen, but uh, I'm a little cynical. Amy, can you also, when we get the dates, make sure an invitation goes out to uh, Paul, uh, Representative Schmidt, um, Senator Rodericks, and Representative Capo. Yeah, right. And um, every, all the town, will, two towns, boards of selectmen. Fire Chiefs Association, too? Yeah, sure, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, all right, at this point, um, any further discussion on it? Like I said, it was uh, very informative. I encourage you to do your own research, too, and reach out to the other school committees as I have. I mean, we all talk to each other anyways in one way or another, and, um, you know, form your own opinion. <coughs> so, at this point, I'll entertain a motion to enter into a brief executive session for reason number two and number three and not to return to open session. So moved. Okay, I have a motion and a second. It is a roll call vote, so. Deb Yes. 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 Yes.